ahead here if you if you skipped ahead to the three minute mark uh this is a triangle so one of the the, the first kitchen rules that i think is interesting to talk about in break is, is maybe the kitchen triangle and so this thumbnail and this idea of this circle oval whatever you want to call it obviously it's not a triangle but you could you could probably make it into a triangle if you could just you know put a couple points there here's the thing the kitchen triangle is one of those things I get asked about a lot on whether or not it's okay to break. What what should it be? What if my kitchen doesn't have a, a triangle? What I mean, what are the rules around that? And we've chatted about it before in the live stream, and I'll bring it up again today. Whether your kitchen has the perfect kitchen triangle, um, which I, I sort of described in my last week's video, uh, because basically by accident, my kitchen in this home it has a pretty good kitchen triangle. I didn't plan it that way. It just is what it is. Or whether your kitchen has some kind of other shape. I like to think of the work in the kitchen being more this oval shape. In other words, you know, there's, we, we work in our kitchens like, you know, we're all over the place. There's no, I don't think there's a perfect way to design it. Yes, there are more functional ways than others. And that's the whole essence of what they're trying to do with the kitchen triangle is make the work in the kitchen more functional and it dates back to just the kitchen being like um a factory actually where uh things are, are done in a particular order so they're super efficient and um and, and that's all fine but we want to make sure that if we're thinking about it, doing a kitchen and we're doing a kitchen design or we're working with somebody that the elements of a kitchen triangle aren't absolutely necessary to adhere to now I'm breaking my own rules because, you know, I, I would want your kitchen to have a good kitchen triangle of sorts, but we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go on here. So I think your the shape of functionality in your kitchen probably looks more like this or some other random shape because that's how you use your kitchen and that's the way it's most functional for you. All right, cool. So here we go. Yes, hit that thumbs up. I do love it. Um, slide number two. All right, here we go. So this, again, just a little depiction of <clears throat> kitchen triangle. Okay. Yeah, I mean, here we go. Um, we got the three main elements of your kitchen. That's where the kitchen triangle comes from, of course. Your sink, your range, your stove, whatever, and your fridge. But we all know that there's more elements in, the, in today's kitchen than these types of things, though they are still there. They're still staples. There's many other things in the kitchen that, you know, you, we access daily. And some some days the, the triangle is used efficiently. Some days we're just back and forth to the fridge because it's it's a fridge in the microwave. It's left overnight. And so there's there's different work triangles that, that are in the kitchen, different work patterns, I guess, is the best way to put it. So. Um, we, we want to be able to understand that it's okay to break that rule and not worry about adhering to all the, the different dimensions that it needs to be. I think it's okay that we can, we can break that. We'll look at a few kitchens. Here's the thing with the kitchen triangle. Oftentimes, it just happens. So in today's modern kitchens, a lot of kitchens, unless they're just one wall kitchens, are going to have, if they have two walls, by just default, almost almost all kitchens have some sort of pattern, like a triangle or whatever you want to call it. Um, we don't necessarily have to get hung up on the shape, but there there is a pattern in the kitchen. And, and it's just because of the shape of kitchens dictate that that's what's going to be there. Like we mentioned last week about the mixed metal thing. Mixed metals happen in a kitchen because they just sort of happened because not all companies can match all their metals for every surface in your kitchen to match. So you get mixed metals. So interior designers come up with this idea that, well, it's okay to have that. Well, it has to be okay because that, there's almost no other way around that. With a kitchen triangle, there's almost no way around it if you're just going to create a functional kitchen without even thinking about the kitchen triangle. You're probably going to create one because you're trying to create a functional kitchen. And so it, it happens almost by default. So you can see here we have a kitchen triangle and this particular one, beautiful kitchen, nice color, you know, nice and nice countertops and all that stuff. But if you look at this kitchen and if you went and looked at the NKBA guidelines for what these should be, this one doesn't, you know, this would be underneath that. This would be under the requirements um, of, of a, you know, a, a guidelined kitchen triangle. So, hey, but is, does this kitchen function? Probably. It looks like it does. Uh, let's look at this one. 
this is a massive kitchen. So here we have just this huge space. Looks gorgeous. Looks beautiful. And this is way outside the 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 maximum of what a kitchen triangle would be in in the guideline. But does this kitchen work? What where what else would you do here? Would you just put the fridge in some random spot? It fits where it fits. It's beautiful looking. It's you know it's big and elegant, and it is what it is. So in this particular case. Uh, you know, yes, there's still a triangle. It's interrupted by the island, which is a big no-no. You don't want to be interrupting it with the island. But this is this is how the kitchen functions and works. And so you could make a kitchen triangle by putting the fridge in some other place, but it's not going to work that way. It's going to work better this way. And it looks nicer this way. So that works fine. Here's a little kitchen here. Probably an average-ish size kitchen, maybe. This is an ultra-massive, but it's not too too small either. And we see we have the fridge, which is paneled, the sinks in the island, and then this makes a really nice little triangle. But all these kitchens are functional and usable and workable and, and have aspects of them that, you know, for the homeowner would be perfect, the perfect kitchen for them. Here's one here that is a, a single-walled kitchen. So when we come to just a single wall kitchen or where all the appliances are on one uh, wall, well, there's no triangle at all. It's just a straight line. It's linear. Um, at best, it's a scalene triangle. I don't know. Uh, that's it. That is a type of triangle where all sides aren't equal. Um, so here you go. You just have this straight line as a functional. Sure. Um, this would be more like a a, a line with an arch because you want to get around somebody. So like, you know, the shape is the shape. The pattern is the pattern. But if you're thinking of designing a kitchen and you're hung up on making sure that it follows the, the triangle rule, don't even, don't worry about it. There's other factors to consider when creating, your, you know, designing your kitchen that you should be thinking about. This one here is a really small kitchen. So it has a kitchen triangle. It's very tight, very compact. It's there. Does it matter? Probably not. It's functional. It works in that space. What else are you going to do? Just put the fridge in the, in the in the garage like you could. Garage, garage. I don't know how you say that. How do you people say that? So these are just all examples of different, you know, sizes of kitchen triangles or non-triangles or other types of shapes that work in a kitchen because you have to deal with when the size of the space that you're dealing with. So in this instance, it's a very small kitchen. We go back a couple here. It's a very big kitchen. You're also dealing with, you know, the amount of appliances that you have. And, you know, considering other work sections like the cleanup with trash and sink and dishwasher and fridge and microwave and small appliances and prep and clean up and sink and, you know, all the different ways that you move around your kitchen, the triangle is kind of an outdated thing to talk about and really should be updated to be more of, a, of a, a, a flow in the kitchen that works in a particular way for you, the homeowner. Now, you know, and in, 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 for, for, in instance, for instance, in this particular kitchen, the, so it, for a, a kitchen to, to have a really functional triangle, excuse me, I'm fumbling over my words. Let me take a sip from my adult sippy cup as Jack calls it. <laughs> Oh, 14 year olds, gotta love them. Um, the sink should be between the fridge and the range. So in a, in, a, in the perfect world of the perfect kitchen triangle, the sink should be in between those things. This doesn't have that. Does it work? Yeah, it does. So it, are they breaking the rule? Yes. Should they be fined for that? Well, obviously. But th this works for, the, for this kitchen. That's the way it's gotta go. So no big worries there. I want to show you these because it, it just shows you the variety of kitchens that not all of them adhere to the perfect kitchen triangle and how it, it really doesn't matter. I wonder if those pizzas are actually in there cooking. It looks like the oven's on, so it must be. So here's uh, another little kitchen. Now we don't see the fridge unless that little, like it's a little tiny fridge there behind that table uh, by that green bag, um, like a, a, you know, a small apartment size fridge. Uh, but again, so the, if that is the fridge, that would be a little kitchen triangle. Here's just a little small kitchen. You get the elements that you need. You need prep space. You need to have some storage. You need to have some landing areas, um, lots of light. It's small. It's compact. It does the job. It functions as, as a kitchen, whether or not that triangle is there. So 
Jackie, you're going to get banned, Jackie, from the channel if you keep up these comments. You don't love that OTR, Jackie. I know you don't. That's just a dig. Oh, there you go. You can, you can often set an oven to just uh, have the light on. Yeah, you can. But would you leave your pizzas in there? I don't know. I think that's... It looks like the the timer's on. Um, I think that's a setup. I don't think those pizzas are really cooking. But interesting. Uh, anyway, so yeah, all the different sizes, just to say that whether or not you have the perfect functioning shape, it really doesn't matter. You you work in the kitchen in a particular way that's functional, and that's the main thing. And here you have this very eclectic kitchen, um, which is pretty cool, actually. This would make a great Airbnb space, um, you know, not for everyone, but one wall, no triangle. It's very linear, and it just is what it is. So th that's that is number one. And just again to say, you can break that rule. And if you're talking with a designer, working with a designer, and it's it is good practice to have you know a functional kitchen. Obviously, you want the the kitchen triangle was invented so that it is efficient, and that's fine. But in today's world, in the way that we work in our kitchens, the amount of people that are working in the kitchen, remember the, the kitchen triangle was back in the day when there was just like a, a woman in the kitchen uh, making meal for the family. Basically, that, and that that's it. But that's not the way it looks like now. I mean, it, there could be three or four people in the kitchen. There, there, there's, the way the kitchen functions now is just different. And so we need to update the fact that, okay, well, this, this triangle thing is a good concept, but let's just bring it into the 2020s so that we can make it so that people aren't saying, well, do I, you know, is that a perfect kitchen triangle or not? Like, like who cares? It's the perfect kitchen oval or it's the perfect linear kitchen or, you know, what have you, as long as your kitchen functions, that's the main thing. So Break that rule all you want a hundred times a day. I do not mind if the kitchen triangle rule is broken, um, but it's, it is a good starting point to look to see if your kitchen is, you know, within reasonable uh, workability. It, it, it's a good like starting point. It's good. It's good reference to see. Um, so I'm, like, I'm not against it, but I'm not like hundred percent have to adhere to it. And my kitchen just by accident, fits within, you know, reasonable standards of a, of a triangle, but I didn't do that on purpose. Okay. Let's keep on going. The next one's this rule. I get this question a lot about dishwasher placement and it's like an unspoken rule that, um, you know, I don't know where it came from. Anyway, you probably have heard this rule before you, or you've heard this before. And I get this question asked a lot comes up from clients. It comes up with designs that, that I, I work with with clients. Um, is, is that the, the, if you're right-handed, the dishwasher has to be on the right of your sink. That, that's not a rule. And, and we've, we've talked about this before, but that's, that's not a rule. I, I, I don't see why it would have to be that way. And, um, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's to me that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. I've had them on both sides. So it's not like I'm talking like, uh, you know, whatever. I, I've had them on both sides. They're both functional. It's where they need to be to be in the best place for it. So this conversation came up with someone recently where they wanted the dishwasher on the right side because they, they thought that it had to be there. And I'm saying, no, it doesn't need to be there. In fact, if it's on the right side, it's it's in a more inconvenient place for everything else that's happening in the kitchen. So let's move it to the left side because it works better there. And they're like, well, isn't that like a rule of some sort? I'm like, no, it's, it's no rule. Kara said it's not a rule, it's just common sense. I, I'm not even sure. It's I think the the thing you have to consider is where does it fit? Maybe it's in an island behind you. It it doesn't need to be on the right side if you're right-handed. That's what I'm trying to say. If it works there the best, fine. If it doesn't, it, it doesn't. That one gets me all the time. I don't get it. So here's just a right dishwasher on the right-hand side. Very cool. It works. But, you know, here's another one. All good. No problems. That's too close to Peninsula, by the way. So this kitchen is breaking a guideline. Just like you to know that. Should be 21 inches from that Peninsula. So KitchenAid. 
you're breaking guidelines and I'm, and I'm, it's out there in the world now. So you can quit it. All right. Fix this. Anyway, here's one here on the left-hand side. Oh my goodness. Whirlpool. What are you doing? Put it on the left-hand side, Whirlpool. You people are just beyond me. I just can't believe this. All the rules being broken. Okay. It doesn't matter. All right. Just deal with it. Here's another one on the right-hand side. Okay. This one fits. I don't know what kind of, what company this is, but this works. It's on the right-hand side. It's fine. It has to go where it needs to go, but there's no written rule that it needs to be there. And so don't worry about that. Uh, that's, that's not a thing. Here's where it shouldn't be on the back of your island. And uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there you go. Unless I don't even, I don't even know how or why this is like this. This is just the most interesting dishwasher placement I've ever seen. Um, you know, if you can't decide where to put it, put it on the back of your island. That's uh, yeah. I'll just let that sink in for a minute. Cause when I see this, I'm like, no, that, that can't be right. But there it is. I mean, it's a beautiful looking kitchen. It's not like it's some just random old thing. It's designed and new and they're, they're you know, uh, they're doing this. <clears throat> there you go. This I don't recommend, but hey, does it have to be on the right hand side of your dish of your sink? It absolutely does not. Um, <sighs> well, Jackie, I'm not going to argue with you. It's the best spot for you is the key. You just missed out that. It's the best spot for me. And uh, yes, we'll go there. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. All right, let's keep going. So that's that's the number two rule I think you can break uh, is that one. Let's talk about wall cabinets. We talk about this all the time. I know um, many of you are, you know, have, well, not many of you, but some of you are, uh, who would say, Hey, we don't need to have wall cabinets all the time. Um, and Helen, yeah, Helen has, um, no wall cabinets. It's something that she, uh, she went for. Now here's the thing. Here's, here's what I find. I'll just leave this picture here for a second. Normally when, um, you see a kitchen that, that normally people are saying they don't have wall cabinets. It's usually re replaced with hanging things like this or a whole bunch of open shelves. I'm not saying that. I think if you're going to break the rule of having no wall cabinets, one, make sure you have ample storage somewhere in your kitchen, somewhere else. Make sure it makes sense and don't take them out blindly. But also, and fine, if you want to take out your wall cabinets and fill the space with these rods and open shelves everywhere, by all means, go for it. Um, that's all fine. I think the main point of the wall cabinet rule is that they're absolutely necessary and you have to have them to have a completed kitchen. And I think that that can be challenged whether, you know, whether or not it works for your kitchen. Of course, that's a different story. Uh, this is a very beautiful range. And again, inset doors, so it must be in the UK. All right, so here we have like just a lot of uh, open shelving and that's fine. But I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of, of this particularly. I don't, you know, I'm not against it. I'll tell you what I love about this kitchen. Absolutely love about this kitchen. And I'll give you a second to guess. And you you probably will guess it because it's not something that you see very often. But just give it a second and put it in the chat. What do I love about this kitchen? Oh, it's such a great little feature. Such a great little feature. Let me take a sip of my adult sippy cup. link in the description where you can get this water H smart water bottle. I've been drinking this all week. I've only met my goal once, <laughs> so I don't drink enough water, but I'm trying. No clutter on the countertops, wrought iron metal on the bar. Uh, da, 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 da. Footrest. Yes. I'm going to tell you something. If you have an Island like this with seating, and you have a footrest, it's a game changer. I'm, I'm telling you right now, it is an absolute game changer to put a footrest. Um, so I love that detail. Anyways, uh, what were we talking about? 
no wall cabinets. Let's keep going. Here we go. This is what I'm talking about. They have ample storage somewhere else. Beautiful kitchen doors, really rich color, but just no shelving, no hanging things. Just beautiful. I really like this. There's obviously ample storage in this kitchen, but there's no need to have wall cabinets on that wall. You could put them there. You could have a bunch of wall cabinets there for the sake of having them. It would probably, and you could probably design it so it looks nice. I mean, whoever did this could probably do that. However, this is a very beautiful look. It doesn't need the wall cabinets. If there's ample storage somewhere else, why put them there? It's okay to break that rule. What are you saying, Phil? If I had Mark Tobin as my kitchen designer, I would have him make custom hood for the range that is painted to look like a microwave <laughs> just put, and just panel it uh, when I'm bored with it. It's a great idea. We could get um, my buddies at 60 Minute Science to do a wrap that looks like a microwave. We could just stick it on there. That, that works. All right, here we go again. So this has a lot of windows, which is great. Not a lot of room for wall cabinets. So if this was designed this way, beautiful. Do you need to have the windows next to the range like that? Maybe not. Maybe they, they don't need them there. Maybe from the exterior, it makes the, the look of the house, you know, the way that the house is supposed to look. But again, there's probably ample storage. Um, dishwasher's on the right on this one, <laughs> by the way. And they got those little hanging things, which are fine. Uh, you know, the, the, I guess that's cool. But, um, you know, no, no wall cabinets again. And so... The idea of just having them for the sake of having them, that's a rule that you can you can definitely um, not adhere to if you don't need to. Don't do it blindly. Make sure you have ample storage. Make sure it works for your kitchen. But uh, it's one you can get away with for sure. Um, where are these images from? These images are from the Google. I just Google images and look for ones that I don't want to talk about. So no, no particular place in general. Just I just Google them. Yeah. I'll tell you what's not on my list tonight, but I'm wishing it was because I don't want to just, for Jackie's sake, I don't want to just keep harping on about the OTR, but now I'm wishing I put it on the list. Rules that you can break. Well, I'll tell you a rule you can break is you can put an OTR in your kitchen if you want to. If, there's, if you absolutely have to have an OTR and you think it's functional and it works for you, you can break Mark Tobin Kitchen Design's rule of not having an OTR. All right, I'll give you that one. Let's keep going. Good thing this isn't recorded because I'll have to deny that I ever said that. Here we go again, another kitchen. Uh, you know, of course, the countertops look a little cluttered for some people. Maybe that's just the way it goes. They got the hanging rack thing, but you could easily put wall cabinets in this kitchen. There's room for them, but there's none there. How come? Well, because they didn't want any, and that's okay. And it's okay for you, too, if you don't need to um, to have them. All right, let's go. More inset. Man, loving the inset. This is the probably European kitchen as well, UK, from the smaller appliance and the inset doors. Definitely a thing that we should have more of. Here you go. You have one little wall cabinet that comes down to the countertop with that drawer, um, and then the rest has none. Uh, you know, looks beautiful, looks great. A few open shelves, whatever. Fill your boots. I don't care. Um, I love the drain board in this kitchen. That's that's into that countertop. That's very cool. So um, someone says it's a Duval kitchen. Must be that one. Probably. They do beautiful work. So another rule that, that we don't need to, to adhere to, um, of course, all these things, there's other things to consider, which is, is the kitchen functional? Do you have storage? Do you have prep space? Is there lots of light? Is it workable? You know, can you get around? Can you function in it? Those are the things to really keep um, something, uh, you know, in focus when you're designing a kitchen. Here's another one here. I really like this kitchen, actually. I love the high gloss uh, wood look. It looks pretty cool. I love those tiles. I don't know. Just something about this that draws me in. It's a beachy feel, I guess. Uh, you know, I'm, I got that beachy Mediterranean vibe going um this has a few wall cabinets on one wall which is great and then on the other wall there's room for them they're not there there's no reason to have them there if you don't need them so you know you can have some and not have others so this is just when you're planning out a kitchen uh, i have spoke with a client today and they designed a very very beautiful kitchen um 
and they had some wall cabinets, but it, they, they weren't just cramped in around the range. They, there was lots of space. And so you, you don't have to just get rid of all your wall cabinets, but you can cut back a little bit and just open up the kitchen, make it a little more open, <laughs> the uh, airy, I don't know what the right word is. Everything doesn't have to be crammed in with wall cabinets and uh, you can just give, give that feel, that openness to the kitchen. Make sure your kitchen just look more open. All right, let's keep going. And the dishwasher's on the right. Maybe it's a rule you should be following, but not according to me. Here's another one here, a few open shelves, lots of wall space. Um, you know, great. No wall cabinets, great. Uh, it's a beautiful kitchen, you know, beautifuler than mine. And it has no wall cabinets. I have wall cabinets. So, you know, there you go. So I just think that uh, when you're designing a kitchen, do what really works for you. If, you. if you'd like that look of having that open feel, that's okay. And if you have the ample storage perfect uh, in some other place, you know, think about cutting back a little bit on, on the wall cabinets. It's definitely not a trend in North America by far um, because... You know, we just we just want to cram kitchens with cabinets because we don't use every inch of space that's absolutely possible to use. We don't want to waste any space, and we we really get on that that bandwagon of just making sure we have every every square inch spoken for. And these kitchens don't. And um, I'm saying that they can be functional without that. So that's the crux. I did put corner cabinets on this list because uh, this is you know what you don't want to end up with. This was the worst case scenario, in my opinion. And uh, I think that um, if you can avoid this, avoid it at all costs. This is a nightmare, um, hands and knees scenario. It's just things are going to get buried. And this is what we don't want to have in a kitchen. If you have this in your kitchen, drop everything you're doing right now and go and see if you can address this situation because this is serious. Okay, people, I'm not joking right now. Okay, I'm not. <laughs> anyway, so go and get this fixed. Go and get this fixed. Why are you doing, what are you doing here? Stop this. This is horrible. The door's hinged the wrong way, first of all. It should be hinged the other way. Oh my goodness, this is killing me. It looks like Corian though, is it? Yeah, it looks like it. Beautiful. Um, not uh, Whatever. This is an old kitchen. You want to avoid this as well. This type of Lazy Susan is not for this type of cabinet. Um, get one that at least works for the cabinet that you're putting it in and not this foolishness. So this is a mess. Anyways, so we want to avoid this, avoid this, okay? Because I'm telling you, for a long time, this is the rule. You got to put a corner cabinet in. This becomes the rule. You got to put a Lazy Susan in. This is the new rule, of course, is just having a nicer Lazy Susan. And I'm all for this. You got your pots and pans in there. There's lots of room for them. They're not going to fall off anywhere. You got this interesting door uh, that's not piano hinge, but the, both of them open. Uh, so that's that's cool. Um, this isn't giving you any more access. It's just a different way to open the door. So don't get tricked by thinking, oh, I got more access now. It's the same access that you would with a regular piano hinge door. But uh, this is a little better. Um, so, you know, that's good. Not my favorite, of course. We all know that. Um, here I am talking about wasting space by blocking a corner, but there's wasted space in there, a ton of it. So, anyway, uh, here's another option for your kitchen. You know, putting in. So instead of just having a corner cabinet, put in put in drawers if you want to. Uh, there's wasted space there too, by the way. If you do this, there's always going to be a waste of space. Okay, it's just managing your expectations of what that is, and and for some of us, it's saying that's okay. We're allowed to have space that's not accounted for in a kitchen. We really are. We have space in every other part of our home that's not accounted for. It's okay to have it in our kitchen as well. Um, I'm not a huge fan of corner drawers in general. Um, you know, whatever. I don't know why. No, no real, <clears throat> real reason. I guess just I just don't like them. So anyway, but you can do it. Uh, here is something that doesn't get spoken of a lot, and that's having the three bin recycle center in your cabinet. So listen, here, let me just cycle back a couple pictures. If you have this, get rid of that shelf, and at the very least, put this in. Takes care of all that. It's a great space for it. Those are huge 42 quart, probably, I think they are quart. Yeah, or liter. Quart, I think. Um, 
bins and there's three of them. And when they're rotated the right way, the door just closes like a regular Lazy Susan door. They pop out of there super easy. I think that's a great way to go. You're saying that looks ridiculous. Well, you know, this looks ridiculous. This at least is, has function. So go that way. Break, break the rule of having a Lazy Susan. At least do something like that. <laughs> don't knock it till you try it i just wanted to say <laughs> it does look a little bit much okay of course you you know you get these uh these pullouts that, that are something that you can do um you know there's there's lots of ways to deal with a corner cabinet um this is a very interesting one here the corner pantry unit but this one is corner pantry on steroids because i'm not a fan of a corner pantry generally i just think they look bulky and ugly um but this is a different way to do it very functional lots of storage and i really like this you need a lot of room for something like this it's got to work for your particular kitchen but something like this i think is really cool uh with with a ton of storage so you know to each his own whatever works i think those doors are pretty cool um Lots of different ways to do a kitchen. So what, what the rule I'm saying is don't get stuck with thinking you need to have some kind of traditional corner base cabinet. You know, there's lots of different ways. I have tons of content on base corners. There's lots of ways to do it. I do videos about it. I do little tutorials with using Ikea to kind of show you. Uh, one recently did really, really well uh, just on showing you different ways to do a corner cabinet. And so uh, break the rule of just having a traditional corner with a Lazy Susan. And, uh, and and stretch the envelope a little bit in your own kitchen. If it's the best thing for the kitchen, then it's the best thing. You know, I, I mean, having a corner with a lazy Susan. If that works, if that's the only thing that works, then by all means, go for it. But there are other options for you. Um, and <laughs> you're not going to believe this, but in the Airbnb that we're we're renovating, I'm probably going to have a corner base with a lazy Susan. So. And I'm probably going to have an OTR. I'm just kidding. I'm not ever going to have an OTR. I don't care what I have to do. There's never going to be an OTR on my camera's cut out of me. Never going to be an OTR in my kitchen. Forget about it. I don't care. Um, but it will have a corner base with Lazy Susan, I'm thinking. Uh, anyway, I'm breaking my own rules. I hate those things, but it's, it seems to be the only thing that's going to work for that space. I don't know. We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe I'll put in one of these, Natasha. Where'd it go? Right there. Maybe I'll put one of those in. Hmm? What do you think of that? It's actually a great idea, Mark. Hmm. I might do that. Okay. Here's the rule you can break. Following the rules. I don't have any slides for this one, so let's just go back here. Break the rules. It's fine. Following all the rules to a T maybe won't make sense for your kitchen. And so it's not necessary that you do it um, if it's going to mean your kitchen is going to not function the way that you want it to. So that's the really the main rules, having a kitchen that works for you. And so don't worry about following all the rules. Now, again, I'm saying this on the back of a video that I just did telling you all the guidelines and all the rules per se. But even on those, I said, you know, some of these might not work for you because your kitchen might be too small or too big or whatever the case may be. And so make sure that it's it's designed to be functional and uh, don't worry about that. There's lots of other rules we can talk about. If you go through the kitchen guidelines, you know, talks about the amount of storage space you need for a particular size kitchen. Well, you know, that just might not be possible in for your scenario. There might be other things you want. You may, you may want to have you know, two dishwashers instead of one, and that takes up storage space. You may want to have, you, know, you might have a wall oven and or a double wall oven, or you might have a whole bunch of appliances, small appliances or other specialty appliances that you need to fit into your kitchen that will take away from storage. So there's, there's no, there's no right or wrong. I would say that, you know, needs to be functional for you. Now, there are some things I would consider maybe non-negotiables. Even these I break from time to time. Uh, some of those would be like clearances. So <laughs> funny story, Jackie. Um, <clears throat> I'll tell you a funny story. Uh, but yeah, clearances. Clearances should be really looked at to make sure that they're they're workable for you. Um, 
And if they're not, then that definitely needs to be considered. And of course, this usually comes in, it comes into play if you have an island. Um, generally speaking, if you just have an open L shape,